Welcome to the Polite Conversations podcast, where every episode is focused on civility, decorum, and good manners. And I'm your lovable, non-controversial host, Ina. If you know me, you know I definitely don't like to ruffle any feathers at all. Welcome to part two, dear listeners. Just wanted to start off with a content warning. We do talk about some difficult topics and views in this part rape apologetics and such that can be hard to listen to. We also read some fairly graphic quotes and discuss sexual violence and assault, as well as the types of people who try to downplay these things and conflate consuming any alcohol with extreme intoxication or incapacitation to assist with their victim blaming. It shouldn't need to be said, but let me say it right at the top, Consent is not complicated, even though some like to pretend it is in order to muddy the waters. Consent can also be revoked at any point. And people who are drinking alcohol can still very enthusiastically consent unless they are so intoxicated or incapacitated that they can't, in which case it's pretty clear that they can't Or if there's any doubt to whether someone is aware enough of what's happening, then it's best not to engage in activities that require clear consent. This is not hard. What a person is wearing or not wearing is also irrelevant because no type of clothing or lack thereof can justify sexual assault or violence. Anyway, these are the types of things we will be discussing, so please proceed with caution. If you have experienced sexual abuse or sexual violence, please check the show notes for resources that can help. Now, the episode. And uh, in, in Better Angels of Our Nature, he has a chapter on the rights revolutions where he talks about rape. Oh boy. And uh, there's two sources that he cites. One is Christina Hoff Summers, and uh, she is known as based mom, you know, fan of Milo Yiannopoulos, basically MRA, men's rights activist, anti-feminist, extremely right wing, um, just like, just awful, 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 extremely biased, worked or works for a right wing think tank. Mm Mm-hmm. And the other person is this Heather McDonald. Wow, she is absolutely out of control. She she really is unhinged. She's, like, scary. Unhinged rape apologist. Um, I mean, Christina Hoff Summers is bad, but... A deep, deep racist, like, truly hateful about black people. Yes, yes. Very openly racist. Yes. And Pinker blurbed her book, and, mm-hmm. you know... So he, he cites these two people to downplay rape stats. Mm-hmm. Do these sound at all like reasonable sources on rape? Right wing. What you mean the the author of the war against boys, Christina Summers? What do you mean? <laughs> Milo Yiannopoulos's best friend, uh, the person who went on uh, Red Ice by accident, <sighs> Nazi podcast that is. Oh my gosh. You know, I've done a lot of things that I regret, but I have never accidentally gone on a Nazi's podcast. Yeah. And I'm going to take that to my grave as an accomplishment, I think. I, I don't I don't expect to step in that particular hole at any point. Yeah, I think that's a little better than wearing hats and gloves for civilized, polite right. behavior. <laughs> right. Right. I think so. So Pinker says things like, um, and Kate Mann did a great, thread on this and i'll link to that in the show notes but she's talking about pinker's views on rape so he says rape is not exactly a normal part of male sexuality but it is not too far off either 
Jesus. I mean, imagine, imagine having that opinion. Well, the way that he has talked about the perpetrators of sexual violence in his own field does suggest that he doesn't find it all that bad. (laughs) (laughs) Because he he does think that, like, removing somebody from a position where they have access to, to students, to possible victims, is, like, too high a price to pay. Yeah. I mean, he, like, if a feminist said this about men Mm -hmm. right it would be perceived as hugely insulting well that's right that's exactly right and he would be mad about it right yeah 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 so like if if like gloria steinem had said that exact sentence he would put it in his book as an example of feminist hysteria yeah yes yes but see his point is that it's uh you know, it's a part of male nature, so we can't exactly um, just hold them accountable or something. And then he, yeah, yeah, and he adds to it, like, by quoting and by citing Christina Hoff Summers and uh, Heather McDonald. And he, he doesn't cite, like, proper statistics. These are, like, opinion pieces and things. Yeah, it's a lot of um, opinion and, like, anecdote. Yeah, it's just, it's shocking. Like, I read some of these things that he's citing. Mm -hmm. So, with Christina Hoff Summers, here's an excerpt from her book, Who Stole Feminism? So, first she has this questionnaire. And this is, you know, this is pretty awful and graphic, so trigger warnings and everything. So yeah, these four questions are being used in rape and sexual assault research in in this questionnaire. Number one, has a man or boy ever made you have sex by using force or threatening to harm you or someone close to you? Just so there is no mistake, by sex we mean putting a penis in your vagina. Number two, has anyone ever made you have oral sex by force or threat of harm Just so there is no mistake, by oral sex we mean that a man or boy put his penis in your mouth or somebody penetrated your vagina or anus with his mouth or tongue. Number three, has anyone ever made you have anal sex by force or threat of harm? Number four, has anyone ever put fingers or objects in your vagina or anus against your will by using force or threat? Any woman who answered yes to any one of these four questions was classified as a victim of rape. So, Christina Hoff Summers has some issues with this. (laughs) And she says, An affirmative answer to any one of the first three questions does reasonably put one in the category of rape victim. The fourth is problematic. For it includes cases in which a boy penetrated a girl with his finger against her will in a heavy petting situation. Certainly the boy behaved badly, but is he a rapist? Probably neither he nor his date would say so. Yet the survey classifies him as a rapist and her as a rape victim. I called Dr. Kilpatrick and asked him about the fourth question. Well, he said, if a woman is forcibly penetrated by an object such as a broomstick, we would call that rape. So would I, I said. But isn't there a big difference between being violated by a broomstick and being violated by a finger? Dr. Kilpatrick acknowledged this. We should have split out fingers versus objects, he said. And therefore the whole survey is wrong. Yes. But also, it's not, that's not. uh, This is what Pinker cites as junk rape statistics. It is not junk statistics. First of all, it does not actually counter the fact that both instances count as rape. How, I mean, how is that like up for debate if someone is being penetrated against their will? I'll tell you what. Here's a fun story. I got a phone call. This was like 10 years ago. I got a phone call at three in the morning from my friend who was staying at a friend's house in the next town over um, that this had happened to her. 
that she had been sleeping at the house and that this person came into the room and used his fingers in exactly that manner. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, uh, we all knew that was an emergency. Yeah. It was three in the morning. I got in my car. I drove over to the next town. I got her and I brought her back to my house. Do you think that that's not something that should be captured? Right? Like we all understood what had just happened. Well, except for the boy, he wanted to say it was no big deal. But we all, the rest of us understood that what had just happened was an assault. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't understand how that is uh, debatable. If it's against her will, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be as awful as being penetrated by a broomstick. Right. So answering yes, because it wasn't a broomstick, but it was fingers, that doesn't, that's not an incorrect answer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah, in terms of like, we always want to do questionnaire questions that don't have too many compounds in them, right? Because that can confuse the reader. Right. And if we did want to break it down later into categories, we wouldn't be able to because the person had said yes, but they hadn't said which it was like, that is all true. But if the question is, did you get penetrated against your will by anything? Uh, the answer to that is yes. And those yeses always mean an assault happened. So that is not junk data. Right. That is useful data. It just isn't as specific as maybe he would have liked. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support it, there are several ways you can do that. You can share it online, talk about what you just heard. You can leave a five-star review to help others find it too. And you can also subscribe via patreon.com forward slash nice mangoes. No E in mangoes. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter before it's uh, completely wrecked, you'll find me at nice mangoes. Again, no E in mangoes. <laughs>